Okay, so today we're going to be looking at how to draw Russian dolls, like the one we've got on screen here. Um, I had a request after a couple of my last videos um, from one of my viewers saying, would it be possible I could draw some Russian dolls? Um, so I spent the last couple of days working around, and they're, they're fairly simple and quite fun to draw. Um, so there's generally two versions of Russian dolls. We've got the more traditional version, which nestle inside each other, so they open up and there's a smaller one inside, and in that there's a smaller one and so forth. Um, then we also have these standalone ones here that, that don't open up and are just one solid piece. Um, so when we come to draw them, there is a, a, a slight difference between the two variants. But 99% of what we're going to be doing here applies to both the nestling and the non-nestling dolls. So let's uh, start off. We'll close up this picture. And I've already opened just a brand new document here. As we can see, nothing on it. So we're just going to start with pen tool. I've, I've got my mirror tool on here, so anything drawn on one side appears on the other side, just to uh, just help speed things up. If you're doing this on paper, you could draw one half, fold it over, and trace it. And let's uh, there we go. That's a good pencil size. So what we're going to do, we're just going to start with a fairly medium-sized circle on the bottom here. We don't have to worry about it being exactly perfect that's somewhere close enough okay on top of that now we're just going to put another circle here um not quite as wide as the, the previous circle so we've got a a kind of a figure eight here just a very thin figure eight now what we're looking at here the, the two main differences we, we were going to have is if it was a nestling doll and one would have to fit inside each other, we can't have something like this. We can't have where what would potentially be the neck be thinner than the head. Otherwise, when they nestled, they wouldn't be able to fit in because the, the, the width of the head would be too th thick than the width of the neck. So if we're doing one that nestles, we'd be more, more tempted just to slope the size out a little bit, like so. Um, for today, we're not doing the nestling one. I mean, you can do them either way. If you want one that isn't nestling and you still want that slope on the side, you can. I quite like the the curve for the neck here. So what we're going to do inside this circle as well, we're going to do two smaller circles. So I'm going to do one in here. This circle here is going to be the perimeter of the face. And just for a guide, I'm doing a... A circle about halfway between the two here just so I know how far out the um, the frills on basically the face are going to be because if we if we look at a, a a nestling doll a Russian doll essentially we've got a face and we've got some type of scarf around the head or some kind of shawl or, or headdress or something that covers the top half and leaves just the the face and a little bit of a hair poking through and then it comes down over the shoulders so what we're going to do next again another circle just where these two circles meet, a smaller one here, this is going to be where the headdress will be tying up under and underneath the chin. And we're just going to do a couple of small almond shapes here. They can be rounded. They could, we, we could do them exactly the same like that. We could put a curve into them like so. We could curve them the other way. So we've got the straight on the top and the S curve on the bottom. It's completely your, your choice, whichever you think be looks best. I'm just going to do a basic one here for now. We're going to just put a little line down the middle to, to simulate some type of crease in the material. Now what we're going to do, I'm just going to flip the cameras around. Starting from this middle point here, coming down about halfway, a little bit below halfway, we're just going to do just a curved line. There we go. This is going to be the bottom of the, the shawl, the headdress, whatever you want to call it. Then underneath, we're just going to put another another semicircle. This is going to be some part of the the dress or the the shirt, whatever whatever's underneath it. And again, just for for reference, I'm going to put another line halfway, just so I know how far my frills and such are going to come down. Now for the for the bottom, we can leave it rounded if you want, um, and just have like that. Um, that's fine. Um, I like to put a little bit of a curved line here 
and then the same as we did on the neck a bit of a curling in just curling out to give it some a feeling that it's just got one one big foot that would help it stand stand on the floor um, I'm just going to put another second parallel line here maybe bring this one down a bit further there you go I'm happy with that so as we can see if, if, if you wanted to make the, the doll a bit taller and bring the, the the circle up a bit you could if you wanted to make this circle a bit bit, bit wider to make it a little bit more uh, a, a little bit fat you can you know whatever whatever you think looks good there's no exact proportion on this it doesn't it's not like we're following a true anatomical person so we don't have to worry about the proportions being perfect so essentially we've got everything we need for our basic structure here we've got where our head's going to be we've got the shawl we've got the body we've got the foot so we're going to go start adding some extra details in now so again these are all decorative so whatever you you feel looks good you can do i'm going to be adding a second line it's just getting a bit thicker as it, it comes towards the body and thinner where it comes to the the, the knot of the neck um again just as another reference line here this this is just to mark how far down the decoration on the um the shawl is going to go now the face is fairly simple as we're not looking at a a true anatomical face we don't have to worry about the proportions being exact so somewhere about halfway maybe a little bit below halfway we're just going to put a line across this is going to be our the line of our eyes then about halfway down there we're going to put another line this is going to be where our nose is uh, so about a third the way and this is where our mouth is going to be now there's, there's a few things i like to do with this so i'm going to zoom in just to to demonstrate this now, if it was an anatomical face, the eyes would have to be one eye apart and, and all this. And we're, you know, we're not going to bother with that. So we're just going to get a rough, rough idea. This is where the eyes are going to be. And the eyes are, are really simple. It's just a, a curved line over the top here. And then just a, a deeper curved line underneath. You can do them, you do them quite deep down like that if, if, you, if you want. If you wanted to do them shorter you could I, I quite like the one's going a bit further down that's where the eye's going to be got a pupil somewhere around here we're going to have some eyebrows just following the curve the curve of the eye a little bit and again we can do we can do the eyebrows in a few different ways we could just do them as straight pencil lines like this we could make them into a almost an elongated teardrop shape that works fine as well um but like the picture I showed in the intro video what we're going to do we're going to curve them over a little bit come a little bit past further than the edge of the eye so somewhere around here we can see if we were to follow a straight line down it'd be closer to the center than it would be the edge of this eye and then we're just gonna another line in that meets that just that simple and then all we're going to do starting a little bit further down we're going to do another line that just meets up with the other eyebrows the, the end of the eyebrow there so we've got a thicker thick edge here and just a point here and after we zoom in the nose is really simple to do these i we're not looking ultra extreme anatomical um, detail here because they're they're fairly simple so we're just going to curve up a little bit and curve down a little bit that's all we need for the nose now for the mouth, this will be somewhere around here where the mouth line is going to be. This would, this would be the center of the lips. Now if this, lip, this line curves down, the face will naturally get a, a sad kind of look. So I generally tend to just give it a slight curve up. It just gives them, gives them a little smile there. And to draw the lips in, all we're going to do is a little curve up and then down. Let's zoom out. See the lips. We can see. We can make them as as wide or as thin as we like. They don't have to be again anatomically correct. I think that's somewhere around right. So for the bottom, the bottom lip, all we're going to do, just a little bit further down, we're just going to do a little curved line. And it doesn't have to connect all the way. It can if you want. If if you want to go from the edge of the lips and curve them all the way around and, and and put a hard line there, you can. That's fine. 
Um, I like just leaving a little bit of the line open so we can put the shading in. We don't have a black line on there. Um, it's completely your choice. You know, try, try a few different ways and find which one you prefer. So we've got mo we've got the the details of the face. Well, one thing we're going to add here, just uh, just as a placeholder, some some circles, some rough circles on the cheeks. We're going to put some um, some red on there to to give us some some colour into her cheeks. The hair we can again, the hair can be done in so many different ways. Um, we could do a hairstyle that, that's just as simple as, as that, a, a curve, and it's um, matched either side, um, and that's fine. That looks good. I'm going to turn my mirror tool off for a second. Um, I'm going to do a, a slightly uneven hairstyle. I'm going to come around here. Nice curve there. Oh, a curve there. It just gives the effect that I've got a slight off-center hair pine. And when, we, when we come to do the, the actual line work, we'd follow the hair around like such to give it just a bit more of effect of it being detailed hair. Again, we're not looking for for crazy ultra detail. You know, these be painted on with a paintbrush by hands. You know what I mean? Um, so they're not, not generally looking to have ultra realistic detail. We're going to look on the, um, the shawl here. We're going to just do some semicircles to... Uh, To give it a, a, a bit of decoration to go around so it doesn't look so plain. And again, they don't have to be all perfectly exactly the same size, as long as they're close enough. Yeah, somewhere there, that's fine. For now, at least, we can tidy it up when we come to do the, the full line work. So the next thing we're going to do, on the on the picture we saw at the start, there was some filigree swirls and stuff like that here. Just for for simplicity on the video, we're just gonna we're just gonna stick to some dots going across. Again, it's just nice and simple. And it looks quite effective. Um, generally, what I like to do is if we've got some dots going through here, we've got another ridge here. We could put dots in if we if we so wished. Um, but to start with this bottom here, actually we're going to put the, the semicircle. So this one again, I'd like to start from the center so we can we can work out, we can gauge where they're going. There you go. I'm going to put another line here just to to make a so I can make the same kind of pattern we've got going here, kind of a an edge to the to the cloth. That's fine. Uh, on the one on the the picture, we had just a on, on the intro of the video. Sorry, which had two set two little curves going here. Again, we can throw a few dots in here to keep this this pattern going all the way through to make it kind of look like it's the same kind of material. And on this this big open part here. We could put anything we like. You could put flowers, you could put anchors, you could put geometric designs, anything you like, you know, as, as crazy or as simple as you want. Now, just just for this video, we're just going to do a simple heart, nothing too complex. There we go. We could put some some extra filigree and stuff like that in here, like we did on the um, on the pitch on the intro. But for the moment, I'm just going to leave it like this. And down the bottom here. Going to do some bigger circles going along the base, or I suppose you could, it could be the foot. So realistically, we've got to put the decoration here, and then that's all the the line work on the rough sketch really done. I mean, that's that's everything we need for the for the line work for for our, our rough. So we're going to add a new layer. We're going to switch to our 
a pen tool. It's a bit too thick. Yeah, that's about right. We're going to mirror that and we're going to put it on a stabilized brush. So what we're going to do is quickly go ahead and trace over everything we've just done again, but just uh, make it a little bit make it a little bit more tidy this time. One thing you will find is if you're using the mirror tool, if you start and you go a little bit off straight, you'll get this, this V shape if you go in either up or down. And sometimes if you try to come into the line, you might naturally just get a little bit of V shape. So it just takes a, a little bit of practice to get that. Um, if you're doing it on paper, again, you could fold your paper in half and imagine the fold of your paper is this, this mirror line here. Draw one half, flip it over with some tracing paper if you want and draw the other side. And it does the same thing. It's just doing it, doing it this way for the sake of the video. Just saves a little bit of time. Just following the lines around. Well, so I'm going to redo that one. That's, that didn't come out how I wanted. I'm going to change this a little bit. There we go. Just tighten up this join a little bit. That's fine. So generally I like to have a a thicker outline just to give it give it some weight. And then when I start doing the details inside, I'm using a thinner line. So let's have a zoom in, see how thick this line is. Yeah, that's about right. So that's what that's that's good. Just gonna tidy up this join here a little bit. And then turn the sketch layer down a little bit so we can see where our, our thick black lines are going properly. That one joins in the middle. It's just gonna come up here quick. And do this circle for the knot. And don't worry about the speed you're doing it. If it takes you longer to do the lines, or you need to do a line two or three times, you know, take as much time as you need. I'm just doing this a bit a bit quicker for the sake of the video. But if you're doing it as a as a final piece um, for selling or for display or something, you know, take a bit more time. Now for these lines here, if I was to just go with a thick line there, I think this line for the shawl here would be too thick. So I'm gonna go down a couple of points a little bit as well, make that line just a little bit thinner. One there. And the second one there. I'm gonna go ahead And put some dots in on here. So let's turn the weighted. Again, these dots aren't following exactly on my rough sketch, but the rough sketch was just throwing them in to get the to get the idea down. Once we're here, we can we can do the details on this. The, the curl on the shawl here. They're just semicircles going across, not too complicated. Now if you get to the end here and your circle isn't going to finish fully, and that's not fine. It, that, that's, that's not a problem. It can it can end halfway through. You know, it just gives the effect that the cloth is wrapping around, you know, because in reality, this would be a 3D object to be rounded. So there'd be parts that wouldn't line up perfectly on the edge. And do our line up again. I'm going to add a semicircle here. 
finish off there. So I'm going to put that on the layer so I can delete it properly after. See, the thing about using the layer here is I can run over the line there, switch to my eraser tool, and we get a perfectly sharp line. And there's no break between the lines joining or anything like that. And then afterwards, I can just merge the two layers. No one knows you've done it like that. And no one knows, how, no one cares how you get to the final result. They they just look at the final picture, and if it looks good, yeah, that's that's all we're after. No no one's going to say, oh, uh, he took two or three two or three attempts to get a line, or he used layers, or he did this and he did that. No no one's going to care. No one's going to tell. So we're just going to merge that layer down. So that's all together now. And we're going to size down the brush again. We're going to do these semicircles like we did just a second ago. Again, they don't have to be absolutely perfect semicircles. Okay. So raise that a little bit there. Merge that layer down. Just the two perpendicular lines here. And just three dots to fit in there. So we're going to do the dots along this ridge seam whatever it is there we go now these ones down here i'm going to deal with them slightly different so i'm going to leave them for the moment but what we are going to do we're going to do the heart real quick let me do that again i think i can do it a bit better So now the only real part we've got to do on the line work is the face up here. Um, we've got a big circle to do around where, and circles um, are notoriously hard to do, but we can we can get it done with a little bit with, with a little bit of practice. And if you need to do it again, if if you do it the first time, for example, and the line falls a bit short, especially for on a computer, we can we can undo it and try again. If you're doing it pen and paper or pencil and paper, just just erase it and, and try again. No one's going to care. I mean, some people might get, you know, super crazy about it and say it has to be done perfect every time. But, you know, leave them people to it. We can do it the way we want to. I'm just going to take the end of that line off, just smooth out when I rejoin. There we go. And just like before, we're just doing semicircles. Super easy. You might find sometimes when you can see, especially when you're working digitally, you might find going one way to do a semicircle is easier than the other because you can see where your brush is going. Um, just try, you know, work out which technique works best for you. Now you want to be working with the curve of your hand. If your hand naturally wants to go, you know, if your hand naturally wants to curve this way, work with the curve rather than trying to work backwards. It's going to be, it's going to be an easier way to draw and it's going to be a more comfortable way. So we're going to turn on the face now. So we're going to turn the line down a little bit. I'm just going to start at the mouth here. That little curve up to give it that little smile. There we go, that's the top lip. Bottom lip. Let me just zoom in for this a little bit here. There 
get that to the bottom lip done. So now it's just a slight S curve, an S there, and then to reverse S there if you're doing it on paper um, by hand um, with a, with a uh, pen or pencil. Now the eyes, we can we can do a few things with the eyes here. Um, if we just do it like so, we've got the the basic eye shape, and that's fine. We can do that, and that that's that's great. That's that's the way it'd look good. I'm just going to redo those. But we can make them a little bit fancy if we want. Now, all I do is I follow this line and I just make the end of the line here just ever so thicker. And all I'm going to do is put a little curl on it. Put little flicks on it just to uh, to represent some eyelashes. Maybe another one there. You don't have to go the whole whole length of the eye. You can if you want, if, if that's the style you like and you think that looks good, then by all means do it. Um, and down here, I'm just going to put two small eyes, uh, eyelashes to represent the bottom eye, eyelid. Um, we're going to make we're going to cheat when we do the pupils rather than having to try draw a perfect circle by hand i mean if you've got a, if you've got a a compass on pen and paper you could do it with a compass but we're going to we're going to cheat with the digitally we're just going to make a big circle and we're just going to plop it down like that we've got the blacks of the eyes there and all we're going to do is switch to our razor smaller circle and delete that, and that gives us the little, the light reflection on the eyes, and it looks quite nice. So we're going to go to our normal brush now, and we're going to turn away from being mirrored. Zoom out a little bit. I'm going to put some stabilization on this. I'm just going to draw the main shape of the hair here. Curved line there. I'm going to turn around to here. Curved line here. I'm going to go to a smaller line again because we're going to do the eyebrows, and the details in the hair at the same time. So all we're doing here is copying the curve somewhat somewhat of even distance it you know if it merges like this it can look good if you want but if it's if it's wavy all over the place like that i don't think it looks so good again for this one we can follow the whole shape and curve it round if you want like this if you just want to follow it Like that again, that works. That's that looks good as well. If you find a different style you like as well, by all means, you know, try your own styles. And you don't have to to just carbon copy what I'm saying here. So we've got the hair there. We're going to turn our mirror tool back on. Going to zoom in a little bit here. Put the the ridge of her nose there. It doesn't have to come all the way down and meet the top of the nostrils there. Just part way down is fine. It doesn't have to feather, it doesn't have to fade out. You can just leave it as a solid line. We'll just colour them in black whilst we're here. Save doing it later. So if we zoom out, Pretty much that's all the lines apart from the the dots here, but we're going to do them a, a, a little bit differently. Um, we've just got the red on the cheeks, but we can we can merge that down, and we can hide our uh, we can hide our, our rough lines to start with. So as you can see, we've pretty much got everything done here regarding the the line work. Um, the colouring on this is nowhere near as complicated as if we were doing a tattoo design. Uh, we can use flat colours. We don't have to worry so much about doing 
super fades everywhere. So we're going to go ahead and start the coloring on it. Um, now, generally in all tattoos, I like to put at least a little bit of black. I, I don't generally like to do a tattoo that has no black at all. So this part here is going to go black. We're going to do, if we're following like the original design, we're going to do here. We're going to do a little bit on the side here, a little bit on the side here. This bottom part, we're going to do all black for the moment. Um, and we're going to have a little bit of shading just around the knot here. I'm going to leave the, the hair for the moment. So I'm going to do that in a separate go. So we're going to merge that down as well. So it's all together. This is our black layer. So we're just going to take our, our multi brush. Grab our black airbrush here. Again, we don't have to worry if, if I was doing this as a uh, a, uh, a, a a tattoo, I'd be using a different a, a different style of brush. Um, I'm just going to redo these selections again, and we're going to expand the selection just so we don't get that little white edge on it. Got our brush. We do a bit here and a bit here. Fill in there. I'm just going to do a little bit of fade here just to give the illusion of just that, that there's a little bit of depth here. We don't have to worry about so much on it here, but I'm just going to put a little bit there and select all that. I'm going to color all that in just solid black for the moment. Okay. Now to, to solve this originally on the, the um, piece we saw to start with, we put uh, white dots across it. Now we could do this one or two ways. We could either delete away from the black and leave it showing through, or we could draw white circles on top on a different layer. So either way works. Um, it's completely your preference. So we're gonna zoom in a little bit further. I'm gonna select our hard edge brush. And this Let's take, uh, in this case, it's a pen, but it's, it's essentially the same thing. And we're just going to delete. I'm going to make this a little bit further apart. There we go. That's that bottom super easily done. The other option is we could have um, drew the outline of the circles and colored in the out of it black. If you were doing it on pen and paper, that would probably be the easiest way to do it. Um, Unless you had a, a, a white marker or some white paint or something to uh, cover over the black. Uh, generally, I don't tend to do that. I don't. I don't generally like the way the the, the white paint covers over black. Um, but if you like it, by all means, go ahead and do it. So we're going to select all these sections of the hair now. Enlarge it. Enlarge section. Just take our paint brush, our airbrush again. And what it is to give the idea just gonna enlarge that selection a little bit as well. And all we're doing is giving the illusion of th that there's a curve in the hair that the light's picking up. I'm going to do here because we've got a couple of a couple of little lines that, that didn't catch in the selection tool. So I'm going to take my little brush and just solid black them in. That way. No one knows any difference. So that's all the black I'm going to put in it. It's a very, very, very minimal amount of black. So uh, we're going to add another layer. We're just going to pick a red color. Yeah, that's fine. So we're going to do all the shawl red. We're going to do the heart red. So we're going to select them together. Larger selection. 
I'm going to go onto a red layer. Take our solid brush. And we're just going to block fill that in red for the moment. Cool. Now all we need to do for the red now is we need to do a little bit of red for the lips and a little bit for the um, for the cheeks. So zoom in a tad. Add another red layer. Yeah. Just going to size our brush down a bit. There we go. Got some some red lips there. I'm going to take my airbrush because it's just got a bit of a softer edge. Just going to some little circles there, and that gives less of a harsh edge, and it just looks like she's got this. It's natural. Oh, the cheeks are going a little bit red. So what we've got to do now, we're just going to do. We're going to select the area inside the face here. I'm just going to pick a, a skin tone. A new layer. We're just gonna fill that in with a skin color. Oops, a little bit that didn't go behind the eyelash there. On. Okay, that's the face colored. So what we're looking at now is the eyes still look a little bit weak, as in they they're just the the blacks of the eye. There's there's no real character to them. So we're going to make, change that to normal. We're going to add another layer here. Add a blue layer. So we're going to pick a, that's fine. So again, we're going to cheat the same way as we did for the, the dark parts of the eyes. We're going to pick our blue. Yeah, that's a good colour. We're going to get our, our hard edged brush, size that up just so it's a little bit bigger than the, the eye. There we go, I'm happy with that. I'm just going to delete the little white parts of the eye so it's still got that simulated light reflection. the uh, lost the skin tone for a second there there we go so that's the face completed so we've not got much left to do here so we're gonna zoom down go back up onto our, our layers our line layer select all this here Grow the selection and go back down onto our blue level. I'm just going to color that all in blue. I mean, they didn't use a tremendously huge color palette, so they weren't using five or six tones of red and blue and so forth and doing complex fades. That wasn't the, the, the way that they were doing this. So it's okay that we've got a flat blue for the, I suppose, what will be the legs here. Um, now I like to put a, just a, a little bit of blue on the edges of these um, ridges of the cloth just to, to give it a, a hint, just to, to um, simulate that it's got some type of texture or fold to it. I mean, you don't have to do it if you don't want to. If you like, if you just like it being as a as a flat, um, a flat white, you can do that. Just gonna put a little bit of blue on each edge. I'm gonna put that back on the blue layer. You don't have to separate all the colours on each on on each layer. That's just something I like to do. For example, if later on I decide I want to change the blue, if I've got it on a separate layer, I can do all the blue in one go. If I've got if I've got all the colours on the same layer and uh, I edit the blue, it will change all the other colors at the same time as well. Um, 
but that's just a personal preference you know you don't you don't have to do it exactly that way as well and all we need to do is up to the top here a little bit there enlarge selection again again i keep enlarging selection i've said it a few times but it just gets rid of the the little blue lines uh, sorry white lines around the edge if you don't if you don't enlarge selection you'll find where it meets up the line they'll just be an ever so slightly and uh, just a tiny tiny white line it's it's just super annoying um so that'll sort of stop you that that'll solve the issue at least in critter um, there's the same function in GIMP, I think the same function in Photoshop. If you're using Procreate, the selection tool, you have to drag it up into the, the high percentages. Um, I've been told you have to take it up to about 95 plus and that will get rid of the, the white edge. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pick a yeah, go to yellow, that's a nice yellow. I'm going to select that front part of the dress, frock, whatever you want to be calling it. Onto our yellow layer. All that in yellow. Super easy. There's one last thing we're going to do with the yellow. If, if you wanted to put some more details in this dress as well, the, the if you wanted to put the filigree, you want to put some dots and so forth, again, go crazy with it. Do, do whatever you, you, you feel looks good. But um, I'm going to select my hard edged, hard edged pen. Going to make the uh, selection quite small. Going to zoom in a little bit, and just to add a little bit of um, variance to the dress, I'm going to take the yellow layer above the red. Just these three little dots in a, a triangle type shape. Again, you can do any any type of pattern you so wish on here. If you wanted to do it more complex, you wanted to add more colours, if you wanted to add shading and fades and all that kind of thing, by all means, go ahead and do it. I just think these little yellow dots here are quite a simple way just to break up that big field of red there so it doesn't look so so boring. So essentially, that's everything finished here. If you wanted to add some extra bits and pieces to these frills here, you know, you, you could. It's it's quite common, especially in old school tattooing. I'll just I'll just show it real quick. If if uh, for example on on these, get my hard my hard edge tool. If you wanted to just put a line in the middle of them each one of them that's quite nice obviously on these smaller ones you'd want a smaller brush we could do that and if we were doing it on the bottoms we'd want to be doing it on the face here just to have some type of consistency so it doesn't like it, it doesn't look like why they just came there out the random So there's a whole bunch of things you could be doing with that. We could colour this this knot in a different colour if you wanted. You could, could put some, some more colours in these frills. But for now, I'm going to call that finished and leave that as it is. If afterwards you wanted to enlarge the picture to make it fill the shape, fill the, the canvas a bit better, you could. Uh, if you wanted to put some flowers on, on, on it. You know, um, go to our pencil tool real quick. Yeah, you wanted a few real fast flowers on there as, as the background. You could, you know, if you wanted to put some type of a burst fill with some little, uh, you know, light beam spark type things on there, that could be cool as well. Um, loads of things you could do with it. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's completely your preference. Go as crazy or simple as you want with it. But that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you do draw anything following this video, uh, 
please send me a link of any pictures you do. You do. Uh, tell me what you think. And if you've got any suggestions of other things you'd like me to draw, um, don't be afraid to say. And I'll see you in the next video.